we finally delved into the wiring harness. I don't know if you can see that with the low light, it's pretty hard. I'll put the low light there. So what we've got is the wiring harness here with the single strand comp components in it. On the positive side, positive side, we still have uh, like a factory setup where they've put uh, you know flashy crimp terminal or whatever in it, and uh, uh, probably a quarter watt, eighth of a watt the resistor in there, 5k resistor, 5k ohm, and that goes into the black wire for our bridge. Now, this resistor ain't the same as the factory resistor solder there and there and has got a the smallest size 5k resistor you could find in Uncle Barney's resistor collection and it's wound around and around and around the wire there ooh they're beautiful nice spike out of there to short on everything uh, and then uh, soldered on to here which of course in no time broke but the original resistor which was in here was probably the same one as this uh, to match uh, is gone and presumably that original one broke so someone stuck another one on there pursuing the same ship of fail and um, it also broke and when that breaks um, instead of the pink wire getting six volts to go for the left track to go backwards and 12 volts from the orange wire to go forwards it gets 12 volts on both occasions because the ground side of this resistor is not tied to the center of the bridge See? that's the positive side that's the negative side when these are in series and power is running from the positive across to the negative side halfway between the two there is 6 volts if this is 12 and that's 0 so 6 volts comes up this wire but if you don't have any zero side of the bridge then this side will always remain at 12 volts so this wire becomes 12 volts instead of 6 volts so when the switch operates closing the circuit from one to the center or the other one to the center when you push the rocker forward or backwards it gets the same signal for both directions and the track only goes forward or forward um, when they built this because there's more resistors in it in the uh, alternator and uh, other ones yet to be found various codes error codes spit out from this computer once it actually gets into a stump and starts really revving up and the turbine kicks in on the uh, Cummins diesel um, and then shuts down so there's obviously more of these nasty resistors inside the harness it's a multi-strand cable uh, as a harness would be so that it can be flexible and can handle vibration and these components design these components are um, a single strand, they've got a single strand wire which is designed to be on a printed circuit board or PCB um, and it's not designed to be in a harness um, if you had single strand wires like that little resistor in all of these wires they would just crack and break in no time rendering the whole machine useless and it's the weakest link um, put one of these inside the harness doesn't matter where it is and it's going to do the same thing um, so this machine was essentially pre-designed to um, go haywire and um, fault pretty early in its life I reckon um, so electrical faults with the a Vermeer SC60TX stump grinder uh, if you got them and I read a few uh, apparently it's got nothing but electrical faults I would uh, be getting the wiring diagram and going down through every harness and getting these resistors okay orange 12 volt wire pink signal wire back to the computer 
black wire ground, 5k pair crimped, 5k pair crimped from power, negative side, this is half the voltage when power is running through it. No solder, so it won't crack. And then we put the tube around it, fix it with silicon. Put that pump silicon up the uh, pump silicon up the inside of that tube to make it a solid piece, taking the strain off them. Mad. So the cable's fully ended and the resistors are in. Alright, that's it. Power side. Give it a squash with proper crimpers. Ratchet ones. They force you to go all the way down. Now this is now there's our centre point of our bridge, there's positive power, our resistors which make 5k, two 10k ones in parallel. Okay. Now we take one of these and we place it over here. And then we place our resistor in here. And then we crimp it again. Blue side for this one for the wire and the resistors. Red side for this one. A little bit tighter to get on the resistor legs alone. Okay. Now this one is remaining. We just knock the end off that. And then, I might take one of these actually, a red, on here. It fits over tight there, and then we've only got one leg to go in there, so we shove that in there. And then, we'll give that a crimp. I don't know you used the bluey on the other one, but... It doesn't really matter that much if you haven't got a red one or a blue one. I just okay. The pink wire is the signal going back to the computer. The orange wire is 12 volts. 
the black wire here is zero volts ground, effectively earth, whatever you like, we call it ground on a battery system. This wire here, it sort of looks like ground, is not. So, positive power comes up to this end, negative power at this end, resistors in between, the centre point of those will be half the voltage of there, 12, 0. So that is 6 volts here, 6 volts out to this wire. So at the end we get 12 volts at the orange, 6 volts at the black. So when the switch closes between the black and the pink, it sends 6 volts to the computer, track goes backwards, sorry, track goes forwards, uh, sends orange 12 volts. When it switches the other way, orange to the pink, the track goes backward. The track goes backwards. Okay. Orange to pink, track backwards, pink to black, track forwards. Go from memory here. Okay. okay, now we've got all that. There. To here, just the length of it. We're going to put that over there. Okay. So, the speed is on the end like that. It's split tube. It just goes over like that. Right. But don't open it up to try and split it over there. Just push it on the end like that. Okay. And then just slide it over. Smoothy. And just slide it over that set of components. They're pretty solid inside there, but nevertheless. Okay. Now, yeah, they're not crushed inside there, they're fairly free. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to squirt Sikaflex, which is like a silicon, but it's really, it sets really solid. It's like industrial, more industrial grade than standard window or automotive silicon. And it will sit quite solid in there. It sticks like nothing else. And those sections will become sort of semi-solid and supported for the components and will not crack with vibration like they were destined to do from design. No solder. Don't solder harnesses. Wires crack at the solder. So, it's 